I invented another Minecraft minigame. This one I call Overflow. And you better prepare yourself because what I've made here is a turn-based strategy game. It's like one of those block battle videos except actually a real thing. Austin. Overflow is a game that can be played between two and four people, and it's played on a square grid like this. You can make the grid any size you like, between 4x4 all the way up to 12x12. However, in my playtesting, I have found that 7x7 grids strike the best balance of complexity, because chances are you're a shorts viewer, and any more would make your brain explode. So, Gerg, how do we actually play this overflow? Come on, get on with it, minigame monkey. W well, I'm a pig, actually. But I'm glad you asked. The game is split into two phases, the setup phase and the game phase. During the setup phase, players take turns placing one concrete powder of their color onto the game board until it is full. So for example, on this 7x7 grid, there are 49 squares. As we played this game with three players, four squares are auto-filled with black concrete powder to make the number 45 which is divisible by three, so each player has 15 powder on the grid. Once they've placed it all and the grid is full, we move on to the game phase. You will then notice there's a bunch of buttons around each wall. These buttons correlate to the pistons below, so that when one is pushed, it double extends out and pushes the powder on the game board, thus pushing the powder on the very edge off and out of the game. The new space created by the piston is then refilled by a black concrete powder pushed from above. How you build this mechanism is shown right here, you just replicate this on each wall of the game board. The goal of the game is simple, all you have to do is be the last colour remaining on the board. There is no subtext to this. You do this by taking turns pushing and overflowing each other off the side. See what I did there? Except it's not that simple. It's time we talk about blocker tokens. Each player at the start is given one blocker token, which is a block that cannot be moved by pistons, such as a barrel, furnace, blast furnace, smoker, there's a couple others but I cannot think of them. How they work is a player can optionally use up their turn to place down their blocker token on the board, only being able to place it on where black powder already is. This means that the corresponding row and column of the blocker token can no longer be pushed, thus protecting certain powder. An example of some of the strategy in this game comes from multiple blocker tokens being used at once. For example, if two players' blocker tokens are on the board, there will always be certain squares that are double locked, meaning that they can no longer be pushed from any direction, meaning one player will eventually be forced to spend their turn moving their blocker token somewhere else instead of eliminating blocks, giving the other player an advantage. As the game progresses, more and more blocks will be eliminated and more and more of the board will become black powder, allowing more freedom of movement for the blocker tokens as the end game approaches. It is worth mentioning the last rule of overflow, and that is the no backsies rule. If one player makes a move, the next player cannot make a move that would effectively undo that move and return it to a previous board position. This is simply there to stop infinite loops and ensures that the game always moves forward. Once all a player's colored powder is removed from the board, they are eliminated and thus their blocker token is also removed from the board. And eventually only one color will remain and whoever's color that is has won. Overflow definitely has some strategic complexities to it. I haven't gone into the form game theory of what's the most effective way you can play this, but it'd be really cool to see the game develop as more people play this and come up with their own strats. I've also added some hoppers below the overflow area to collect any powder and put it in one chest for collection later. But I hope you enjoy and I'd love to see how this game develops. Schematic in my Discord as always, and I'll see you in the next video.